How are you, my friends? This is uh, lecture 37 of the algebra course lectures, real zeros of polynomial functions. There are two ideas in the objectives, finding the uh, rational zeros and discussing the Descartes rule of signs. Now the aim of this lecture is this, if we have a polynomial function here of degree three, this one easy to factor by grouping, just take x squared out, x minus three, take four out, x minus three, then you can factor it. Now this one is not easy to factor, although this is cubic and we have three zeros. Because we cannot factor this, we need to see the next slide to have a theorem on factoring such polynomials. Rational zeros test. If we have any polynomial like this, then <coughs> the rational zeros are P over Q. So P is coming from factor of the constant term A0. So we look at the constant term, we find the factors. And then Q, the factors of the leading coefficient A sub N. So once we find P and Q, we can divide every P by every Q, we get rational zero. Then we try them on the function. Now let's find all the zeros of this polynomial. For sure, we cannot factor this easily, 2X to the power four plus three x cubed minus seven x squared minus 12 x minus four. So let me show you how do we find P and Q. P is a factor of the constant term here minus four. So what are the numbers that can be divisible by minus four? Plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four. Now Q is a factor of the leading coefficient, two here is the leading coefficient. So Q will be plus or minus one, plus or minus two. Now divide every P by every Q. So all this divide by one, and then all this divide by two. So sometimes we have a repeated here, plus or minus two, divide by plus or minus two will be plus or minus one. So it's already there. So now P over Q, we call them the possible rational zeros, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four, plus or minus half. Now, the whole idea here to find the zeros, we need to try each P over Q by synthetic division and check the remainder. Let's take minus one. So I put here all the coefficients, two, three, minus seven, minus 12, minus four. And then in the chair here, I put minus one. I can choose any number from P over Q. So we have eight here, two, four, six, eight possible rational zeros. Two comes down, you know the story, minus two, add one, minus one, minus eight, eight minus four, zero. So the remainder is zero. That means this minus one is a zero. So now we have one zero on this function. We have to find the others. Now, we already from the previous slide, we found minus one. Then I continue, take one. Two comes down, one times two is two, three, three minus five, it's not zero, see here? Minus nine, the remainder is not zero. So this one is not a zero. So I go back, see this is the blue, I go back to the black where, where the uh, remainder is zero. Two, one, minus eight, minus four. And then I try minus two. Two comes down, minus four, add six minus two. Then the remainder is zero, so minus two is a zero. Then we stop. Why we stop? We have four zeros. We found two, minus one and minus two. So which means two are left. So I can take the quotient here, two x squared minus three x minus two and factor it if I can. 2x plus 1x minus 2. If you multiply, you get uh, this one here. So now here the zeros is 2 and minus half. You can continue from there if you like, but it's better to stop 
when two zeros are left. Stop when two zeros are left. So now the zeros are minus one, minus two, two, and minus half. These are the four zeros. Let's try another nice one. Find all the zeros of this polynomial function, 2x cubed. So this one, three zeros are there. So we start with P and then Q. Just the repetition here, the constant term minus five. So this is P, the leading coefficient is two. So this is Q, uh, P over every P divided by every Q. So all this by, by one and all this by two. So I try one, oh, it is not a zero. So if you try one here, the remainder is minus 12, which is not a zero. So one is not a zero of the function f. So I try minus one. Two comes down, minus uh, two, minus one, minus three, three, minus is zero. The remainder is zero, so minus one is a zero. You see? So we stop if two zeros are left. All the quotient here is quadratic, which is two zeros are left. So I take the quotient two x squared minus three x minus five and factor it here. Two x minus five x plus one. I already found here one zero minus one. There is another minus one here. So minus one is repeated. See three zeros because the degree is three and zero minus one is repeated. But we don't write here in descent. We don't write minus one, minus one. We write only minus one, five over two. But we know minus one is repeated. This is very important remark. If we have any polynomial function and we are looking for the zeros and we found one. So if a zero is found, try it again. Maybe it is a repeated zero. Like this example we have seen, uh, minus one, we are trying minus one. So the coefficients are two minus one, minus eight, minus five. Two comes down, it is a zero. So minus one is a zero. Now we try it again directly, minus one on this quotient. Two comes down, minus two. Maybe there's another zero here. So minus one is repeated. So only take the quotient, find x equals five over two. <clears throat> uh, given the polynomial, find all zeros. This is example number three, repetition. So I will uh, find P and Q very quickly here. We need all zeros, then we need the product of the complex zeros. So this is P, this is Q, this is P over Q, this is synthetic. So remain there is one. You can try one minus one, two minus two, three minus three, six minus six. You can start with any number go a little fast here because we did already three examples same idea so one is a zero so if you try minus one you get remainder four so r is not zero so minus one is not a zero so i can take this black one two three six i try minus two it is a zero then i stop because two zeros are left why two zeros are left this is degree four, so that's four zeros. We found one and we find minus two. So I take here the last line, the division one, zero, three, zero. So this is the quotient, x squared plus three only. So I can factor by complex numbers. Use the formula, you know, a squared plus b squared is equal a plus bi, a minus bi. Multiplying complex number and the conjugate. So the zeros are, one, you see there is a one here. See, there is a one and there is a minus two. So one minus two, square root of three i, minus square root of three i. That's part A. Part B, find the product of the complex. So this one times this one, i times i, i squared, which is minus one with the minus plus one and then three. So three only. Determine the different possibilities for the number of positive and negative zeros. Like this one, we did not say find the zeros. We can do that like example one, two, three. But here we need the, the number of the positive. How many positive zeros? How many negative? Let me show you how to do, do that. Take the function here and look at the variation. See, let's agree this thread is positive, the sign, and this is the 
black may be negative. You see? So positive, negative, there's one change, variation. Negative, positive, another change. Positive, positive, no change. Positive, negative, another change. So that means the function has three variations. Now you have to subtract always two. I will show you the formula now. So three or one, positive zeros. Three or one, because we had already three, three changes in the sign, three variations, or one. Now, if I put f of minus x, so minus x here, all power four, minus x cubed, minus x squared, minus in the x, then this is what you get in the function, plus x power four cubed plus minus minus. So we have plus plus plus, one change there, one negative zero. One change in the f of minus x means one negative zero. So we can make a table here. So the positive real can be three or one. See, it says three or one. If we have three positive, that means one negative. No complex because we have already four. Maybe there is one real positive, one negative, that means we have two complex. So these are the possibilities of the positive and negative real zeros. Now, this is the formula. We call it Descartes' rule of signs. You can just read it easily. Polynomial function. The missing term, zero coefficients, are counted as no change. So if there is myth missing x cubed, x bar four, x squared, don't count it. Now, the number here, the formula, the number of positive real zeros, so positive real zeros, equals the number of variation or less than the number of variation by positive even integer, which we take it here too. This is the formula for the negative. So the number of negative real zeros equals the number of variation in the function f of minus x. So I put minus x, then I check the variation. This is another example. See, we did one, example four. This is example five. Determine the possibilities for the positive and negative zeros. We have x power five. We can see here plus, plus, minus, plus, plus. I think how many changes we have here? Two variations. See, I put the plus and the minus. Plus and minus, one change. Minus and plus, another change. So two variations, subtract two, or zero positive. So either we have two positive or no positive. Now put uh, minus x in every x. So you get minus, plus, plus, minus, plus. So how many changes we have? Negative and positive, there is one and there is one, there is three. Three subtract two, three or one. Now let's make a table. The positive are two or zero. So I can say the positive two or zero. If the positive two, and we have also a three in the negative and or one. So we have two positive, three negative, that means five, no complex. If we have two positive, one negative, that's two complex. We can have zero positive and three negative, two complex. Zero positive, one negative, and four complex. These are the possibilities. You have to know which one, you have to find the zeros, all of them. Now this is exam type. We have a polynomial function of degree six. Use Descartes rule of signs. Capital M is the maximum possible number of the positive. So remember, capital M is the maximum positive number. Capital N is the minimum possible number in the negative. Find M plus N, that's a multiple choice. A, B, C, D, E. Now, as usual, as we did before, look in the variations, how many variations we have? One, two, and three, three or one. So I take the highest, see the maximum, Possible, that's three. So capital M will be three. Now in the negative, I have how many? One change there, see, one change. So the capital M is one. So three plus one, four, and the answer here is D. 
Now, this is a nice question. Find the number of x intercepts of the graph of the polynomial function. We have polynomial function of degree five. Very complicated, difficult zeros. Let's find the number of x intercept. Now we cannot factor this for sure. We have to go by p over q, rational zeros test. Rational zeros test. Now, if you look at the uh, solution of example seven, we find p over q as usual, plus or minus one, plus or minus three, plus or minus nine, and we start trying by synthetic division. We try by one. You can please check the numbers. So I put all the coefficients, one minus three, 12 minus 28, 27 and minus nine. There is no missing here. So we see the remainder is zero, so one is a zero. Try it again on the same quotient. So I try one and then I find the remainder is also zero. So one is repeated, try it again. Then I try another time one. I found also the remainder is zero. So one is repeated again. So far in this function x power five, we have x minus one all cubed. So three zeros are the same. We can continue but we stop because two zeros are left. So I have one zero nine zero. So I can take the quotient x squared plus nine. You know, the factoring will be complex numbers here. X plus three i, x minus three i. So now the function, see the whole function is x minus one cubed, x squared plus nine, which is x minus one cubed, x plus three i, x minus three i. This is the factoring. Now the zeros are one repeated three times and two complex. So the question, find the number of x-intercept, one. Because the same number, the graph will cut the x-axis at one number only. Let's look now at example eight, the important example where the graph of the polynomial function, p of x is below the x-axis. So first we have to find the zeros and look at the real zeros, which are the x intercept. Now for sure, this one we cannot factor. So we use rational zeros theorem P over Q. So P plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, plus or minus six. You know the story, use synthetic division. If I pick up minus three, I put the coefficients here, minus one, minus five, minus eight, minus six, minus one comes down multiply that's three minus two multiply six minus two multiply six so the remainder is zero so minus three is a zero of the p so i take the quotient minus x squared minus two x minus two then i use the quadratic formula so it will be two complex solutions so the only real zero is minus three which is x intercept and then the behavior it looks like minus x cubed up to the left, down to the right. We see where the graph is below the X from minus three open until infinity. Question number nine, given the polynomial function, find the sum of the rational zeros, find the sum of the irrational zeros. So we have to find the zeros first. This is degree four. So let's find the set of all possible rational zeros, P over Q plus or minus one plus or minus half, you know, P over Q. So I uh, try minus one. Remember here the coefficients two, 15, 17, three and minus one. Two comes down, that's minus two, 13, minus 13, four. Multiply by minus one is minus one, three, four, minus one, one. So R is zero, so minus one is a zero. Now let's try minus half. Also the remainder is zero, so minus half is a zero. Now we can use the quotient, two x squared plus 12 x minus two to find the other zeros. Now the others, this is the quotient. You can take two common factor because we need a is one, b six and c is minus one. See, this is two x squared, 12 x minus two, yes? So the quadratic formula, when you plug in the numbers here, minus P plus or minus square root of B squared minus four AC divided by two A, it will be minus three P 
plus or minus square root of 10. So all the solutions, all the zeros are minus one, minus half, minus three plus square root of 10, minus three minus square root of 10. Now, if we need the rational zeros, this is a rational zeros, minus one, minus half. You add them, you get minus three over two. The irrational zeros, when you add them, you get minus six. Now, these are questions for you to practice. All the exam question number one, factor the polynomial function of degree five. Find the number of possible rational zeros of this polynomial function degree four. If A and B are distinct rational zeros of this function, find A times B. This is a capital F use Descartes rules of sign, find P plus N. P is the maximum possible number of positive, capital N is the maximum possible number of negative. Now this is uh, not easy, also nice. X minus two squared is a factor of the polynomial function x to the power four plus a x cubed plus eight x squared minus 16 x plus b. Then we have to find a and b, multiply them, the answer, minus 48, minus 16, minus 32, minus 64, minus 54. Question number six, find the number of rational zeros of the polynomial function, m of x, x to the power 50, minus 5x to the power 25 plus x squared minus 1. And the question number 7, we have a polynomial function of degree 5, f of x, uh, x to the power 5 minus x to the power 4, minus 7x cubed plus 7x squared minus 12x minus 12. Use Descartes rule of signs, find a squared plus b squared. This is a multiple choice question. A is the maximum possible number of positive real zeros, and B is the maximum possible number of negative real zeros. Now here are the answers, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven. For complete solutions, please, you can see the video on all the exams questions, real zeros of polynomial function, lecture 37. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can subscribe and share it with your friends. Just to remind you, this is lecture 37 of the algebra course. I wish I can see you in another video with another topic. Thank you very much.